everybody. This is Grace. In this video, I'm going to talk about this. Um, of, have you ever had to deal with somebody, an adult now, and it could be kids, but I'm talking about adults. It could be teenagers. I'm talking about adults. <laughs> they do something that you know they know better than to do. Okay, and it can be a variety. We all know that. They absolutely know they should not do that, but they do it anyway. And you already know that they know not to do that. So you you feel like, in a way, you have to chastise them like a ch they're a child. That's infantilization, by the way, treating somebody like they're much younger than they are. And that's not a good thing. So you try, but you've, you've learned that any way you speak to them, they they just won't listen. When they want to do something, and then they, when they find out that it irritates you, they're going to do it again. And then they're going to do, blame you. Or they might say something like call you a B word or a C word or something like that because you're complaining again. <laughs> Seriously. They will fight. I know it's not funny. It's just the way I, you know. They will, you know, the, the, the unbelievable how they are. It, it makes me sometimes just you know, shake my head and sometimes I say, if you don't laugh you'll go crazy because these people are bonkers they are children they are an adult they are adults who act like I don't even want to say they act like you know bad children because I don't want to insult children they're just horrible people that is, do they have a life really out of sight of making ir irritating somebody and showing that they have power and control that they dominate, that they can do whatever they want to, and you just have to take it. You know, some people, and including me, say that stop looking at it like that because that's just feeding into the conspiracy kind of thinking. It's conspiracy kind of thinking. Instead, this is just their disorder. I don't diagnose anybody. But this is so much of a disorder, personality disorder, or disorders, that there's no way they're going to change it. It's just it's who they are. Okay, I'm going to give an example. Okay, I'm going to give an example for what they are because, you know, if they do actually have a disorder, you know, the, and saying that it's that disorder, that they cannot think like normal, don't even want to say normal, like people who are not disordered. They, they just don't. Okay, let me give you, like I said, I'll give an example. How, we all know, <laughs> I think really, we all know that, say you live in a, anywhere, okay, I'm going to say anywhere, and leaving the doors unlocked is not a good thing. Now, I did grow up in a place, and when I was young, people did leave their doors unlocked during the day. I'm serious, even in the, to the, Oh, I guess maybe uh, 20 teens, you know, early. It, it was like I went there and I locked the door. Why are you locking the door? It's daytime. <laughs> you know, I don't care. I don't live in the way back then. Uh-uh. You know. But no, many people know you don't, you know, you just don't leave doors unlocked. Like somebody's in the house or even if they're not. And you feel like, you know, not you, let's say the other person. You know, an adult, somebody, and they just feel like they're going to go for a walk. You're inside, you know. I'm saying you. I don't mean you, but you, you know what I'm saying. But they, uh, they just they want to go for just a walk, and so they leave doors unlocked that go to the outside. Not just one. They may do two. Like you know, if they have a doggy door or something, leave it open, and the dogs go out. One of them. You know, you have a front door, and you're inside, and that's not safe. It is not safe. And so you, you confront them with it. They, you know, they know not to do that. It is not safe. But they do it anyway. And so you confront them. Try to be an adult. Speak to them as they're an adult. And they, what? That time they, <laughs> it's funny. 
Oh, you know, they're, they're the kind of thing. What are the odds? You know, what are the odds that just because that one time, you know, it's, they're not going to take blame. They're not going to accept the blame for what they've done. Okay. So, just a few days later, they do it again. Just do it again. What are they going to do? This time, like I said, you're the B word or the C word even. So they're not going to accept that they, why is this person waiting? That they did something wrong. Because to them, it's about power and control. Some of them, some of them is just, they don't think. I can end right there. Period. Full stop. They don't think. But it's all about them. Like I said, the conspiracy behind, you know, saying these kinds of things, I'm not a fan of. It's their disorder. You know, it's their disorder. They, you know, we could look at it that way. We could look at it the way that they're, they are actually conspiring with themselves. You know, conspiracy is usually with other people, other others. But some people these days, they, they use it that way. They're, they're conspiring within their mind to do something to you, to irritate you, to show their dominance, to whatever it is that they want to show. They're going to show. Or they just don't care. It's what they want to do at the moment is to go, you know, outside. And they don't want to lock the doors. Ah, that's an extra step. I, I've done videos about how some people would say, oh, they're just, la you know, this that's just being lazy. But these are people who, who could also, none of this was one size fits all. But they could, they don't want to take an extra step. Like, you know, like think of, think of it this way. Okay, I had to stop that. But think of it in this way. You have your favorite, I don't drink coffee, but you say you have your favorite coffee cup. And you, what, you know, some people, I, I don't drink coffee seriously, so I'm not all that knowledgeable about how people, their behaviors when they're doing coffee. But say you put your coffee cup, you clean your coffee cup, and you put it next to the coffee maker, and when you get up in the morning, you, it's right there. Okay? And the other person doesn't care. You know what they drink out of well they, they get up there and there's no coffee cup there for them and they really don't feel like taking it literally taking an extra step just one step over and get one off the counter or get one out of the cabinet or whatever so they take yours your favorite coffee cup that you clean for yourself and you put it right there like i said i don't drink coffee so yeah so you're upset because that's your favorite cup co you know, coffee cup. Now, I can understand. I have certain ones, you know, that I like to drink of. Certain types I like to drink out of. It just has a different, to me, you know, feel to it. Or, you know, you put ice in it. And the ice might melt in this one. It won't in that one. That kind of thing. And that person knows it. Say that person knows it. And takes it anyway. Because it would actually involve them having to make an extra movement. I am serious. I have known people like this. And they're not going to wash their own. Uh, nah. And they may use the same one they have not washed and use it again. Or like if they have something that, um, whatever reason, they didn't, well, they don't, they won't, probably would. The dishes weren't washed or there's a dish left there, they'll take that one. Hey, it's already dirty, but eh. You know, this kind of, because it's an actual literal extra step that they would have to take move to, to get something clean or to clean something okay now it could be the literal actual step you know with their legs but they, they, they don't want to do that mm -mm 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 -mm. but it could also be something like to them locking a door like say there's two locks on the door and you live somewhere where you know you should not leave any door unlocked i, I would say anywhere is that okay and it's just my opinion. Uh, yeah. Anyway, uh, I am a social behavioral scientist, by the way. But so <laughs> they have. There's two locks on the door at night, and they, they you know, the places have two locks on the doors for reasons. But uh, if they have to. Oh my goodness, they have to lock one of them. Why do I want to lock two? You know, <laughs> to them that is an extra step in the whole process is to actually lock the second one. And they really didn't even want to do the first one. What are the odds? That kind of mentality. And so they leave the second one open so at, you know, at nighttime or sometimes they won't even lock it, like I said. 
you have to go around checking to make sure the doors are locked so nobody breaks in. Daytime, same thing. They don't, they don't think. I, like I said before, I put in there, full stop. But really. Okay, <clears throat> now again, you know, if, you, if you're going to think in terms, and I have, believe me, I have myself. And I still do to some extent. <laughs> but overall, no, as I've aged and grown and got to know these kind of people more and more, uh -uh. to think, you know, that it's, it's some kind of within their own mind, they have plotted and planned to do certain things. Some of them do. I'm going to say one size does not fit all and not even that one person who usually doesn't, they can and they may do that. It's a plan that they're going to do this to you because they know it irritates you. But also, like I said earlier, it could be just be all around their disorder. Okay? And no, you can't really separate the two. I'm well aware of it. You cannot separate the two. But to put so much of that on yourself, though, this, you know, these are my opinions. Read the disclaimers in the description box below this video on YouTube. I could be wrong. But to put you, to put some, so much on yourself, and you might not think that you're putting so much on yourself. You're saying, you're blaming them, rightfully so. They're doing this to you. You know, they're, they're showing they don't care. They're showing that this, this, that, and the other. How, how they want to dominate. How they want to, you know, so, you know, then turn around and call you names. And then turn around and do this. You want to say that they're doing it to you. And which, like I said, they actually are. But you're putting a lot on yourself. By, by underneath it could be underneath it all you're thinking what is wrong with me that they would do this to me you're blaming the victim yourself and you're putting all that on you you, you know it's like it's a reflection on you what they do to you they could possibly do that to anybody anybody you know some people say well the narcissist only does this to certain people <laughs> and I'm like that's BS. They'll do it to anybody they can. And then that's my experience. Like I said, one size does not fit all. Boy, that's hard to see around that corner. I don't know why, but it was. But the, the really, my experience in life is that not only do they have narcissistic, pers you know, narcissistic behaviors. I don't diagnose, like I said. Um, which is mainly about exploitation. And, and, and also trying to uh, what I've seen is about them trying to say that they are something they're not, which they use to exploit people, like to say that they know better than every, and usually every scientist or every professional or everybody who does whatever, they know better, you know, and they try to, to impress you, try to show you that, prove it to you with a bunch of BS, okay, pseudo, it's actually a term I read in some scholarly journal article, it's called pseudo profound bullshit, that is exactly how they put it, they didn't say BS, they said bullshit, I don't know how scholarly it is, <laughs> I've never heard of it in the journal before, but, or maybe journals, but anyway, and that they're really good manipulative, they're really good speakers usually, often, not one size doesn't fit all again, and they're really good at twisting and turning, and they can be very popular too, because they are good at manipulation. Find the people who are not so popular. <laughs> you know, they, they don't, they're not really like scripted. The, the way that they speak, maybe they're just kind of go with the flow like I usually do. Yeah, these are the people who are real in my view. They are real. The people who are not all shiny, you know, <laughs> and they don't have that kind of accent. You know, that's another story. But, uh, to say shiny. <laughs> anyway. But people who are real, okay, real, not scripted. The other ones are human, but they're scripted. Anyway, where was I? Oh, I could take a breath, right? And, uh, but yeah, overall, the, you know, to put that much pressure on yourself, I mean, pressure's not the right word. What word am I looking for? You know, maybe it is. And maybe it is the, the right word. But, oh, Miku, sorry. <laughs> I couldn't help that. But to put that much on ourselves, I, like I said, I have done this to think, what is wrong with me that people want to treat me like this? 
and the, the really when it comes down to it like I said it's their disorder they will do it to anybody they can and I mean still even people they can't they will try maybe one size doesn't fit all but to put that so much on myself questioning myself when overall I'm just a good decent person okay, plain and simple full stop <laughs> you see we could say full stop there I'm not taking blame Oh, somebody was not happy there. Did you see, could you see that? They're, they're in a turning lane up there and that person wasn't turning because there were traffic coming. So one of them went all the way around. I'm like, what the, ever, I can't see around there myself, so I am not taking my life and like that when I can't see. There we go. That one's taking their own sweet time. But I don't do that. If, if I can't see around them, I'm not risking my life is because somebody else wants to go <laughs> yeah. but that was that was bad the people from the other direction just well you know, can we say narcissistic <laughs> yeah. I can I can say it you betcha not diagnosing but really okay y'all just missed somebody running right out and backing up right on the other side you know the road so they're going the other direction just, she didn't even bother to look to see if anybody was coming. And you see that now too, right? <laughs> so, you, what is it today? Oh my goodness, I better be, I better be scared, huh? Because this is, I come out to this place, by the way, because I'm going to start doing it because another one I go to. Uh, okay, now don't you back up on me too. The other one I go to, used to go to, uh-uh, no. Uh, they, the way they treated me and this other woman one day mm -mm. It was not good but it could have just been them right so okay I went around to get a parking spot and somebody zoomed in it <laughs> made me think of that uh, show fried green tomatoes and uh, I am not going to find a parking spot huh but fried green tomatoes and let me try again um, oh no, that was the one I was going to get. <laughs> okay. I actually wanted to get closer because I, you know how older people you hear when you're growing up, they say, my knee's acting up. Well, my knee's acting up. <laughs> I, uh, it was, um, early, Feb it was February, 2020. And, uh, just whatever had happened to me, I was in my home and, um, I was going from one room to the next and all of a sudden I just tipped to the left and fell on my left knee on a hardwood floor and I heard crack okay now the, now a couple of weeks ago or so I don't go upstairs because of it and I did I don't remember a couple of weeks or so and ever since then every once in a while yeah okay which is why I w wanted to get closer so uh, I didn't have to walk as far but why you know the, I, I would never understand it <laughs> The place where you return your cards is all is, is any place I've been in for years is not up front. So you got to walk all the way back, you know, at least middle or whatever, and then go all the way back again. <laughs> My thought is it's good to park next to where the cards, except for one thing, there are some people out there who will hit you or just throw the cart toward the space, and if it doesn't, they just they're not going to worry with it. I've seen that too. I'm full of all these. Well, I'm going to go into there. i got a few things to buy. And we'll see. Okay. Whoa, it's hot. Whew, it's hot. It's Texas. We go We go from winter. I mean, I think we had maybe a couple of weeks of spring. And then summertime weather. 90s straight across. Has been for a few days. 90s. And at nighttime in the 70s, it's like, kind of like Florida weather, too, when I lived in Florida. Uh, Pembroke Pines, Hollywood, Florida, and uh, Fort Lauderdale. I lived in more than one time. But anyway, that, that got so boring when the temperature was 90 high, 70 low. And it rained every day for, I don't know, you know, at some point during the day it was going to rain. Just a little bit, even. But anyway, it, it was a good experience going in there. Um, I've had not so good so
Okay, but this one, you know, I, I know this one, overall the people are nice, and uh, the customers and the employees are nice, so, as far as any time I've been here. Oh, now I'm going to go to Sonic and get me some onion rings, called Adam to see if he wanted some, he wants some onion rings, and I love their, their diet Dr. Pepper with black, diet blackberry, yeah, okay. Okay, and like, I, like the whole thing I was talking about from the beginning was when people do things that they know, you know they know, that they shouldn't do. You know, like when I, you saw me in this parking lot, or I don't know if you could see because I'm not looking at my camera, of course, but uh, to see if you could see all that. But when people pull out in front of you or something like that, you know they know. They, would, they wouldn't have gotten their driver's license if they didn't know. But they're not supposed to do that. You never know. Some people, they, maybe they did get their driver's license. I don't remember how to get into this place from here. So, I haven't been here in a while. But, anyway, you know they know not to do that. But they do it anyway. Because they have that kind of, you can assume it's because they have that kind of mentality that it's all about them. And they're going to rush and get in front of you. You know, it's kind of like, you know, when you're at a store and this did not happen to me today, but you um, it's happened, but somebody tries to run and get in front of you when you're you're going toward the cashier you know, to the lane, and they just want to rush and get in front of you. So they're the first; they're there before you. <laughs> oh, okay, I need a place where there's some shade right here. Wow, it says due to staffing issues, we are only doing drive-through. Wow. Okie dokie. Uh, we went to a place the other day. Um, it was a Long John Silver's. I went. I was going to get us something. And it was like 1130 or something like that. And uh, the, uh, the employee, she was dressed for her job at Long John Silver's. And she was uh, putting up a sign that says, we're close. It was Mother's Day. She said, it said, close for Mother's Day. I guess people just didn't show up. <laughs> Okay, but wow, you know, I've never known Sonic to be like that. Never have I ever been to a Sonic and they say drive through only. Never. <laughs> so, I've been going through to uh, Sonic since I was a teenager. Maybe even before then. I remember during school, we used to, we were allowed to leave for lunch, you know, if you're a junior or senior, or you rode with somebody who was. And uh, we would go to Sonic or wherever we could. But Sonic was one of our main ones. Um, but wow, this is amazing to me. And it's starting to get busy. But anyway, you know, back to all this. You know, I do more of a... I don't sit there, you know, I'm a very educated woman, uh, person. I, my master's is in sociology. I taught at college and university. But I am much more laid back. Okay, I think I confused the woman because I kind of... At first, I wasn't going to get one of them as a combo, but why not? <laughs> you know, I got one of those uh, All-American hot dogs. But really, because it's not that much more expensive with as a combo. So, uh-oh, somebody's not happy and they're leaving. Out of the line. Hopefully, they won't, like, I went to this other place the other day. Well, it was a couple weeks ago, I guess. And uh, maybe somebody did that because they gave me the wrong order and I didn't know it until I got home. So... Yeah. Okay. Now, <laughs> I had to remind myself of this. Where I live, it's, it, the place has a reputation. It had a reputation before I even knew it existed. And, and the reputation is that there are many narcissistic people. Okay? And believe me, I know that I just traveled this far. It's about like 10 miles maybe. Um, outside of it, and it's a world of difference. People here are you know, generally very friendly. Well, <laughs> when I was ordering here, there was, it, I was kind of taken, you know, aback, and and it was like, then I figured it out. The, the, the cashier was so nice. No sarcasm, no snarliness, no, um, you know, oh, you're wasting my time. <laughs> and I had ordered it wrong the first time. I really confused her because I was confused. I think I had started to mention that. And she was just real nice about it. She wasn't mean or anything, you know. And, and it dawned on me again. Remember, <laughs> the reason you come out here is because people here are nice. Okay. 
they, they're nice. It's kind of like going to, it is, overall, I would say a small city. And uh, it's different. People are different. I live in a big city suburb of Dallas. And, and like I said, it has a reputation. No, no place should have a reputation because not all people who live there are like that. And it just puts that on them. You know, the people who are good. You know, just like all I've been saying, you know, blaming a victim or blaming someone who doesn't do anything. But she, they get a reputation for living there by some people. You know, some people who don't get how that is wrong. <laughs> you know, it's wrong to do that. But it does, but it is thicker, I can tell you that. That the, the it's not everybody, of course, and it's not all, all always. But it is thicker, the amount of I own the road, the amount of you're in my way. And people sticking their hands in front of you, your face in a store because they think they're first. And they're going to grab something before you get it. All these negative things. It happens more in that, in that one that has a reputation than it does just 10 miles out. <laughs> and I don't even know if it's a full 10 miles. But actually I did before more than once. It was like 10.5 miles. So something like that. But anyway, um, I think, you remember the South Fork Ranch from the show Dallas? It's out here. Okay, so, anyway, but these onion rings are smelling good. They really are. Okay, <clears throat> like I said, you know, we know there are some people who do these things to get back to the front, to get back to the front, boy, that makes sense. But, you know, we know there are people that they, they just do the things because I really think that some of it's because of their disorder. And the person can tell them time and time and time again, don't do that. There's, there's safety issues. Don't do that. There are this issue, that issue. I don't appreciate it. You're treating me wrong. Whatever it is. And it probably, whatever, doesn't sink in. It doesn't fit their way of being. Whatever it is. You can tell them time and time again. Some of them, then they just don't listen. They don't learn. Sometimes I wonder if they're actually listening. They hear it, but are they listening? Are they putting it to memory? I can tell you that some of them know. My experience. But, just like, you know, these other examples, you know, I, I've given, people know that they shouldn't do that on the road, in the store, you know, like I said, how rude some people are. They put, they're just about, I don't know, Adam and I were, went to a convenience store, and this guy, I don't drink coffee, like I said, and this guy, he, he, he you could tell it was like, it was, he was in probably his mid-30s, like it was, he had an aura around him or something, that he was so narcissistic, he, Adam was, you know, looking at the machines, he hadn't been in there a while to look, you know how they constantly seemed to be having to me, I don't drink coffee, I don't buy coffee, so... Uh, but they have new kinds of machines and how you have to work it and everything and he was standing right in front of it and he was you know With his hand up to pick the button and a guy stuck it This guy stuck his cup on the thing and, and pushed his button for himself I'm like what the? at least that's what I saw and I asked Adam and he said yeah He said that guy was he just put his cup up there and did it You know, I mean how I mean really seriously think about how a person must be and he was acting like before that wasn't all the whole thing okay he was this guy was acting like we were in his way and I know that happens in many places and like I said some of it is thicker some places it is thicker definitely but really Adam's like oh you know and some of those things you know he's older than I and when something like that happens as it is a person could be stunned because we don't think in terms of, you know, many people don't think in terms of that, that they, that somebody would do that, even though we probably have experienced it before, but, you know, we don't experience it that often, so, and we can't just make up in our mind that there's going to be somebody who, you know, it's kind of paranoid as it would be. You know, somebody's going to come up and do something that rude, so it's kind of like a stun, sh you know, shocked, whoa, you know, what is this? At the moment. Then you have time to think about it, you know, once that person's walked away, and so you don't get a chance to say something. 
But me, I've seen too much. I've been out in the public too much. You know, I'm a homemaker. Uh, after I was a career student taught at Pompton University. Yeah, to turn it off because it was a school zone. Aren't the kids out for summer? <laughs> I don't know. Maybe it's next week. But anyway, I don't have kids in school. Right. But, uh, yeah. And where was I? What was I talking about? But yeah, I I'm out in the public more. And believe me, you know, I have seen in this, these kinds of things happen so many times that I'm no longer, like when it's happening to me, I'm no longer, with that, I don't drink coffee, remember, like I said? So, I wasn't even sure, and it was on the other side of Adam as it was. And, uh, but when somebody does something like that, put your hand right in front of my face. That happens, I'm telling you. And it happens so many times that I, I do. You know, it, it's not shocking to me anymore. And they do it, and I just say, well, how rude. <laughs> you know? and, uh, I, I, here I am, a gentle giant, tall, strong-bodied woman. Who's going to say something? <laughs> you know? I, I'd never let that, ever let that uh, make who I am, you know, how I am. Because of, you know, my strength and all. And, but yeah, I mean, of course it's going to become part of my personality. I just say that as a joke. I never really think about it, honestly, that people are intimidated by me because of my size. But I think about it every blue moon when something happens or when I go into a store and or I'm some, in some place and I realize I'm the tallest person in the store. I'm the tallest person around. You know? <laughs> so Or somebody, they, they, they seem intimidated by me. Yeah, that comes to mind. But no, I don't. I don't have a problem. I got another school zone. That's that school zone. I, I've known this for many years. Is the weirdest one because here's the school right here, but it's the school zone is just a certain part behind me. Really, it's weird. You see the speed limit? And there's no school zone right here where there is the school. Go figure. But anyway, um, so I, I don't have a problem with if somebody does something like that. I will say, how rude. You know, and sometimes I'll say it pretty loud. <laughs> Point them out. But I would not advise that. I am Texan, and I'm not saying all Texans are like that. But I was raised in a place where many people were like that. We stood up for ourselves. Some people, I'm going to say I would never advise anybody to do something like that because people can be dangerous. And here it is in Texas. Yeah, I'm well aware people can be dangerous. I'm not saying it's a Texan thing. No. Some people, they, they assume all oh, Texans are this and all oh, Texans wear cowboy hats, blue jeans. I can't remember the last time I wore blue jeans, seriously. It was probably decades ago. <laughs> and I don't wear a cowboy hat, cowgirl hat, no rodeo belt buckle, no cowboy boots. I have not, I cannot tell you when was the last time I saw somebody like that. Seriously. And remember South Fork Ranch, South Fork Ranch right over there? <laughs> so. But, oh my goodness. Okay, and like I said, some people, they should know. You know they know better than that. They thought they should know better than to say every Texan is this. Every Texan is that. But they'll do it anyway. If it suits their narrative, some people will do that. And if it suits their narrative. And what they, what they want to say, what they want people to hear, what they want to, you know, show their ignorance about. And that's, that's a good thing. It's a good assumption when people to say something negative about all Texans or just say all, just the word all. <laughs> no, not all or any of those ways. Okay, but they, some will still do it. Some will still do it. Um, none of us are perfect. I'm definitely not perfect. So we, we will do stuff, you know, that's not perfect. At some point in our lives, if we live long enough, we're gonna we're gonna make mistakes. Okay, and it could be that we have heard so many times people say, "Oh, people there, they're this way, they're that way." Not all people are, and that's not good. And it's been more recent that I've written with my, that would not be true than putting out there that people need to. Some people need to see. Saying people from saying that somebody from that town or that part of the town or that whatever, you know, they grew up there or there wherever, they're this, that, and the other. Don't show your ignorance, really. And I said it was recent online, 
I should say. I've been making more videos about it. I've been making videos for seven years or so. And, uh, but as far as putting it out there, like, in other ways, yeah, I've done it for many years. No town, no city, no area, no people should have bad reputations or any reputations or any stereotypes that is not a good thing. It shows more about the other person, the person who's doing it, the person who is st using those stereotypes, it shows that they are ignorant. It shows more bad about them than they can make it seem about others. Yeah. So. Huh. Anyway, I'm on my way back home. So how many miles? I should have uh, checked the mileage when I left from there. But I, like I said, I've done it before. It was ten and a half miles before. So it's a nice drive, but it is warm, and I'm probably getting a sunburn. <laughs> I hope I'm getting it. But anyway. So I'm going to wrap this up. I'll talk to you on another video. And boy, do those onion rings smell good. I'll talk to you on another video. Bye.